Lana Del Rey is performing at Lollapalooza, which means that in a month, I'm gonna see my baby girl. And I'm so excited because I not only love Lana Del Rey, no, it's just because of that. Like, last time I saw her was in 2019, so I'm having a little Lana Del Rey ambitionist. I just saw that Ultra Violence made it back to the set list, so I lost my shit. Because I love that song so much. And I just remember that with that song, with that masterpiece, it came a lot of controversies. And that's what I want to talk about today. You know, Lana Del Rey is one of the most controversial artists that we have in the pop scene today. If not, at least one of the most criticized. This conversation about Lana Del Rey and feminism has been going around for a few years and it reached a new peak back in 2020 when she posted that infamous question for the culture statement on Instagram. But before I give my opinion, I want to give you some context. Before becoming Lana Del Rey, Elizabeth Grant has been performing for years as Lizzie Grant in some New York bars with other musicians looking for a chance to break out. She eventually signed with Five Point Record and dropped an album in 2010 called Lana Del Rey, but her career was still struggling to take off. Within the next year, everything would change because Lana signed with her new managers and went through a significant rebrand. God bless her new managers, let's be honest. In October 2011, she uploaded her self-made music video for video games, which alternate between vintage footage and webcam shots of her singing. It didn't take long for the video to go viral, and she got a deal with Interscope and Polydor Records to release her second studio album. And this is already where the first drama starts, when Baby Girl released video games. Yes, a lot of people start criticizing her over her American dream, came from nowhere background. There was also criticism surrounding her lyrics and aesthetic because everything was very much about adoring a man, suffering over him, or even being his object of desire. In an interview for Pitchfork in 2011, she even said, my songs are cinematic so they seem to reference a glamorous era or fetishize certain lifestyles, but that's not my in. I'm not trying to create an image or a persona. So yeah, when Born to Die came out, Lana Del Rey was already being called anti-feminist and of course things didn't get better <laughs> once the actual album came out and they analyzed the other lyrics in there. No, seriously though, just a parenthesis, because this album was so criticized back in the day, like just us the girlies liked it. We knew it because we're smarter. Ten years later, yeah, about that. Ten years later, the album is being, you know, oh yeah, no, look, this is actually a really good piece. Born to Die arrived during the prime of the sad girl Tumblr aesthetic. Songs like Dark Paradise and Summertime Sadness really spoke to that lost youth that many people were expressing on their Tumblr page. The main theme and aesthetic of the album were centered around suffering for love, her devotion to her partner, and like a delicate femininity. A review from The Atlantic at the time pointed out that while her work could be seen as regressive by many people, Lana was successful in reclaiming a virgin of femininity that few thought needed reclaiming, reselling it with an unsettling but undeniable verb. Facts. There was even more because when the single Blue Jeans came out, a lot of people got mad at her because the cover art of the single was Lana with a male hand in her um, neck. Like she was either being choked or the guy was checking her pose. But like they didn't even look at the other pictures, right? Because there is a whole photo shoot in this single where you can clearly see she's being choked, but it's more like on a sexual way. Another issue that it's kind of hard to defend Lana on that, but it was her fascination for Lolita, a book by Vladimir Nabokov that, you know, it's basically a and after the races, for example, she quotes the opening line of the book with light of my life, fire of my lungs. It's a very catchy line and it was very clever and it would be amazing if it wasn't, you know, originally from Part of her branding at the time was also about loving a daddy and getting involved with older men as seen on her song Yayo, which was originally from her Lizzie Grant album, famously the visuals for Ride. The both songs were released in the deluxe paradise edition of Born to Die. This could even be okay thinking she was 27 at the time, so like really young to be mature, but at the same time old enough to like make her own choices, you know, it would be all okay. But if you get the whole context. Yeah, it can be kind of weird. I'm ready to get canceled without even starting my life yet. Ultra violence. Controversial. Controversial. One of the best albums ever made in history. 
one of the best albums ever made in history. I have so many things to talk about this album and I'll try to be brief and objective at the same time but when this album came out before it she had already dropped two singles West Codes and Shades of ah! This I'm so good. But the most controversial, the actual controversial song was the the title of the album, Ultra Violence. That is the song that inspired this whole video. Okay, this is interesting. I actually learned this while making this video, but the word ultra violence comes from that dystopian book by Anthony Burgess, A Clockwork Orange, that is described by the characters when they need to talk about random acts of violence. That really famous line, he hit me and he felt like a kiss, is actually a quote from the Crystal songs. It's a 1962 song. Selena was criticized by glamorizing domestic violence and physical abuse. Similar arguments were made about the song Pretty When You Cry, where she sings about being trapped in an abusive relationship and loving her abuse partner and that's exactly what I want to talk about it's a really fine line I understand especially for 2014 when the album came out that the times were different and the age were different and the reason why I like albums so much is exactly because depending on the artist it's a whole part of their lives in there one of the reasons why I love Lana Del Rey so much is because like in all of her albums you can totally see the storyline going on you can totally see where her head was at if she was singing about an abusive relationship and if she made a whole album about that it's not because she's glamorizing it it's because she went through that and she's expressing this yeah it can be like she's glamorizing abuse because you know Lena is a really gorgeous woman and she has her specific aesthetic I just get a little I don't know the word for that but I just get a little uncomfortable with this statement because most of the critics were made by people who are not women so they don't have any way they don't have any they cannot say what is feminism or not because they're not there especially when you are overly sensitive and overly empathetic like people are gonna abuse you but once you're in love it's really hard for you to see certain things it's just so much gaslighting and manipulation that is guys like that you just don't know what is true and what is not anymore and sometimes you don't even love the person that much but they just alter your reality in certain way that it makes you feel like oh no actually i'm completely in love with this person personally it's just it gave me a lot of strength in the moments that i needed like they were just peak, being peaky on lana now that i'm thinking now that i'm saying this out loud i feel like yeah you're accusing her of being anti-feminist when you are being anti-feminist as well as a woman who went through a really bad situation and had bad feelings and had her mind confused and her feelings all messed up she had no right to express herself because you who know nothing about women you just said that she was doing that the problem though is how lena handled the situation she said the issue of feminism is just it's not an interesting concept i'm more interested in you know space acts and tesla what's gonna happen with our intergalactic possibilities whenever people bring up feminism i'm just like god i'm just not really that interested the damage has been done and it's important to notice that 2014 was a huge year for feminism because it was the same summer when Taylor Swift openly embraced feminism with her girl squad it was the same summer where Beyonce made her iconic flawless performance at the VMAs and she had feminists written all over all big back then it was still emerging so some celebrities she was afraid to like call themselves feminists because they didn't want to lose their relevance or whatever and that could be Lana's case the problem is that in the next thing things really started to go downhill with her attitudes like she had this interview with James Franco that doesn't help either where she tried to explain her cult saying that i'm not undermining other issues but i feel like that's obvious like i shouldn't even have to bring that up that quote really didn't help her image it just made her seem dismissive in november 2014 there was a leaked video of a rape scene from a horror movie with the director ellie roth he later said that the video was so disturbing that you would never see the light of the day the video was actually part of a music video from Marilyn Manson who were partly dated Lana a little before that. Marilyn Manson is sick like completely disgust, disgusting disappointing she never talked about the video never mentioned anything into today. In the following years Lana seemed to like drift away from this sad girl aesthetic and vibes she dropped the album honeymoon the vibes are a weight lighter in there but things started to actually get better for Lana in 2017 when she released the album Lust. Oh 
list for life. What an album, right? I know 2017 was actually a really big year for Lana Del Rey, especially when it comes to feminism because she gave an interview to Pitchfork and she clarifies some of her previous statements in the past year. First of all, she stopped singing the line he hit me and it felt like a kiss because she didn't feel comfortable with that anymore. Having someone to be aggressive in a relationship was the only relationship I knew. I'm not going to say that that lyric was 100% true, but I do feel comfortable saying that what I used to was a difficult to mutuals relationship and it wasn't because of me. I told you! It just came to my mind that quote from the purse of being a wallflower, you accept the love you think you deserve. Maybe back then she had a really low self-esteem and that's what she thought she deserved. How is she gonna sing about something else if she doesn't know anything else? Anyways, in the same interview, she said, Women hated me. I know why. It's because there were things I was saying that either they just couldn't connect you or were maybe worried that if they were in the same position, it would put them in a vulnerable place. She also explained the 2014 quote about being a feminist. She said that at the time, she just was in a privileged position. She wasn't seeing all the realities and she felt like she was doing well. I had line shows just like The Weeknd does. I got tons of women in my life. I love women. I support women. I just felt like, why don't we talk about the music first? Like, I understand her way of thinking, but at the same time, it's like, okay, it's a privileged position, but what matters is that now she knows, she's aware of that, she learned, she acknowledged. She also said that after you know who became the president of the United States. She just doesn't feel like using the flag anymore. She doesn't want to give the wrong impression. Now, when people ask me those questions, I feel a little different. When you have a leader at the top of the pyramid who is casually being loud and funny about things like that, it's brought up character defects in people who already have the propensity to be violent towards women. I'm from Brazil, right? So for a while, we had a really shitty president. That's exactly what I said. Like, it's not a matter of like being conservative or being liberal it's not a matter of being like left or right it's a matter of like look who you're putting in power is someone who is openly saying very disgusting criminal things about women baby girl dropped norma fucking rockwell one of her most critic critic the critics loved it. it was a it was a vibe it was a masterpiece and it's considered one of the best albums in history by a very important music publication me the album was mainly produced by lana del rey with jack antonoff please be besties for the rest of your life it was named one of the best albums of the year by pitchfork and the guardian made it to several year end and decade end lists and it was nominated for the grammy for album of the year that was the year i stopped watching the grammys because i was like a oh, bitch you're not gonna give this album anything? Okay, Baby Girl went on tour to promote Norman fucking Rockwell that ended up not happening because she lost her voice at some point and then the pandemic happened right after everything was fine. She remained quiet until in May 2020, she posted the infamous question for the culture statement on Instagram. <sighs> okay, she began to text by name dropping Doja Cat, Ariana Grande, Camila Cabello, Cardi B, Kalani, Nicki Minaj, and Beyonce saying that now that they have number ones with songs about being sexy, wearing no clothes, fucking and cheating, can I please go back singing about being in body, feeling beautiful by being in love, even if their relationship is not perfect or dancing for money or whatever I want without being crucified or saying I'm glamorizing abuse she took this out of nowhere she just went on to say that she was upset with the treatment she's been receiving over the years and that she's tired of hearing that she's glamorizing abuse when she's just a glamorous person singing about her reality we talked about that before let this be clear i'm not not a feminist but there has to be a place in feminism for women who look and act like me the kind of women who says no but men hear yes the kind of women who are slated for being their authentic delicate selves the kind of women who get their own stories and voices taken away from them by strong women or by men who hate women and then she finished announcing two poetry books in an album that was released the next year and like the biggest issue here it is the fact that for her to prove her point, she had to bring down seven other women, where six of them are women of color. This is not my standpoint, so it's not like I'm gonna make a whole speech about it because it's not my reality and I don't know. Just by observing, you can see that in society in general, I feel like the most unfair treatment goes to black women. There is a long way that you have to go through and you have to face so much stuff. And that's why everyone got so mad at Lana because first of all, she messed with like at least seven fandoms. <laughs> it's also very problematic to use these women in the same statement where you're saying that basically they're not feminine, not delicate, just because they're singing about more sexual and empowering stuff. To defend herself, Lana did her thing. 
made everything worse and said that when tweets get on a pole it's art but when lana gets on a pole she's called a whore another woman of color and for context trix is a trained pole dancer and her acrobatic art can be seen in the music video for cellophane and the live performance of her albums magdalene she also said that pole dance helped her to feel like her strong self again after having six fibroid tumors removed from her uterus so yeah to tweaks it was a very like empowering thing Violana was criticized but she made a short film called tropical where she was not accused of being anti-feminist or not criticized about the poll she was being criticized for cultural appropriation there you go lena you're so diverse sorry i'm just making things lighter the whole statement was to promote her new album chemtrails over the country club i don't like the album at all don't come at me okay but it's not my thing the problem is when she announced the cover art she literally said see there are people of color in the album. It has the same energy of, I'm not racist because I even have black friends. Like, bitch, that doesn't mean anything. In 11 years working, I have always been extremely inclusive without trying to. My best friends are rappers. My boyfriends have been rappers. My dearest friends have been from all over the place. So before you make comments again about a women of color, people of color issue, I'm not the one storming the Capitol. I'm literally changing the word by putting my life and thoughts and love out there on the table 24 seven. Can totally see her point, right? She's not the one storming the Capitol, but like none of us are. But she, that doesn't change the fact that we have to change some stuff in ourselves in order for us to create a better society so it's a really wrong way to word things you know of course it backfires so giving all the drama all the controversies she just deleted her social media now she has a private instagram honeymoon i love her instagram by the way the pictures of her in brazil just iconic i know it's not the point but i needed to talk about this with someone okay this video was written by a really good journalist luana harumi like she's so good but she wrote this like a year ago uh, after the release of blue banisters and of course like she wrote the video and i put my personal opinion on it so it's like a half and half thing but so now i'm just gonna say whatever i want because we have did you know that there's a tunnel under ocean boulevard out and that is a very important album for the whole context of the video as well. i don't think she needs anymore you know like she has um there's really strong and intense and loyal fan base maybe because she was always so raw and it's very easy for us at least to connect with her by the single she released american horde i listen to the song every single day at least three times a day because otherwise my day just doesn't go by because i live for that song it's just so so good and she talks about it you know like about always being portrayed as an american whore like everything is going to be her fault and things like that but if you listen to the song very openly you can when i say open it's like with your mind open you can see how mature she got you can see how her vision is changing you can see how she's learning and like yeah she's a very privileged girl she came from a good upbringing i'm glad that she is becoming more self-aware of the things that she says because she is a very powerful influence and people are dumb some people are dumb let's be honest some people are just not smart and they're gonna take it the wrong way so might as well stay quiet i think about american horror like in video games like the most recent single with the first single where you know she would sing about it's you it's you it's all for you like everything is for you and then now she's singing about it's not about having someone to love me anymore <sighs> ah! you know it just hits the whole album is more family oriented feelings about is she gonna be a mom is she gonna have a future like she wants that i guess that's it i guess we covered everything Woo! oh my goodness good good luck for you watching this whole shit i don't know why i'm saying that because i'm gonna be the one who's editing so excited for lena if you're new here don't forget to subscribe and if you're not new or if you are doesn't matter give it a thumbs up look how long the video is give it a thumbs up okay that's it bye